Today we're going to be talking about happiness and also our actions, routines, habits. So if you're interested also, let's not forget that I'm making an illustration of a morning cup of coffee and let's say a morning table. So if you're interested, please continue the video. And thank you so much. Let's get ahead on. First of all, why is it so difficult to be happy? Well, for centuries, spy solvers have wondered how to find happiness. Um, examples? Buddha cast aside his worldly passions in hopes of becoming happier. Ancient Greek for solvers debated and wrote treaties on the nature of happiness. But which idea were useful in our lives? Let's see. Well, Jonathan Hyde uh, tackles this question and this happiness hypothesis, which is, Hyde is a sociophile sociologist and ethic professor at New York University Stern School of Business. He considers, as I said, he considered ten ideas in happiness in light of modern scientific research, and he shows us how they can be applied to our everyday lives, which is the key idea. When our reasoning and our impulses are in conflict, we struggle to be happy. Well, the first idea Hyde explores is the division between the automatic and controlled parts of our mind. As I said, you know, we have a wake mind and sleeping mind. So, Boudou has said that the mind can behave like a wild elephant. And it can be led astray by our body desires like lust, hunger, and pleasure. Meanwhile, our logic acts as a wide eye top in the elephant trying to control its action. The elephant represents our automatic and unsourced self. Well, and the rider represents our capacity for national thinking and decision making. Well, this means our mind is often in the conflict. But we have a wild elephant that's guided by desires on top of which side a logical rider struggling to control it. We might want to extra self-control when eating chocolate, for example, or so we don't eat too much. But our patient can ge like be the better of us. And the key idea here is we inherited our way of thinking from our like ancestors or like our life, uh, everything around us. It's the reason you can't find yourself, of course. Modern science explains why the elephant and the rider are at odds. Well, uh, mammals grow larger and divided and behavior, their minds grow larger too, isn't it? Like, you know, when you get bigger, your heads get bigger, your body get bigger. This is an example. So he said they developed a new layer of neural tissues called the neocertex. Well, the neocertex engages in thinking and planning and it allows us to make decisions. Then, and this is our rider. But we still retain the automatic processing of our ancestors. This is our get and tutions, emotions and immediate responses to dangers. You know, whenever you face um, something bad, a problem, you immediately respond to it without thinking. Like you won't say, if someone is going to hit you, of course you'll close your eyes, you'll defend yourself. Immediately, without thinking about it, without like thinking, taking time and think, well, um, this person is going to hit me or something, so I have to defend myself or raise my hand, close my eyes. No. It's just an immediate, uh, immediately like respond from our minds, which was given um, immediately. So this is such an example. Also, um, we don't realize these two systems don't always work in harmony, but we struggle with identifying our choices, our feelings. And you might exercise that this divide when you crave something that you know is bad for you and eventually you give in to carving dep deposit and our better judgment. This is our logical self and your emotion self in conflict. An example. Let like next we'll learn how to negate uh, this conflict in order to become happier. Okay, the main idea is the conflict between our and um, like script creeps and other way of thinking is all because of us you know we control ourselves 
So this is why you gave happiness. You can't always be happy. Like, life will have no meaning. You have to go through hard times, sad times sometimes, depression, um, heartbreak, uh, mental break, uh, breakdown, you know. It's just for some time, but you'll face a lot of happiness in your life. Uh, maybe it can be uh, someone in your life. Maybe it can be uh, something that happened in your day, a reason that making you happy. Always think about it, but try not to think about something bad that happened. So it already happened, it finished, you have to think about the future, not the past. You know what, this also reminds me of something that's called, uh, how do we have it work? Well, what was the first thing that you did when you woke up this morning? Let me see, did you reach over and check your phone? Or did you get to make yourself a cup of coffee? Or often our day is filled with activities we don't really think about. You do things and you forget about. Well, in fact, a 2006 Duke University study showed that 40% of our daily activities aren't conclusions, choices, but habits. It's just a habit. Habits are things we do automatically that don't require decision making. Which is like our habit affects everything, how we eat, what we believe, even our lifespan. Um, Charles Dugan is a prize-winning business journalist. He wrote Power of Habit to investigate the way on which like habit impact individuals, organization, and also societies. And through his explorations, uh, Dugan gave us the key to changing our own. So the key idea here is habits form automatically through repetitions. And 1993 or 1993, a man named Ingrid and Pirley was hospitalized after a virus destroyed large parts of his brain. This reminds me of an ant ate someone's brain. Well, this virus decimated that sections of his brain that forms memory, which is the middle temporary uh, and but the doctors working with Ingudin realizes he was still somehow able to form new habits, even though uh, a lot of parts in his mind wasn't working. Uh, he couldn't tell doctors what his own home looked like, he could still find his way there after a long walk, like he doesn't know where his home at, but immediately he can go through and walk to his house. This was a habit. How was this possible? Well, actually, habits develop in our primitive a part of our brain called the basal ganglia. This region is in Kuja's brain, massively has remained untouched by viruses. Often, we don't need to think in order to do written things like walk or eat, uh, do homeworks. This is just natural things we do in our day. This is because the basal jung uh, jungle creates habits by converting repeated actions into automatic routines. You know, you see, like when you ever do something and you keep doing it the same day, the next day, and the next day for a long time, you find out that you're doing it daily like it's a habit without even thinking that you're doing it. It will become a habit that we will feel less if you don't do it. You'll that you will feel like there is something missing in your day if you don't do it. So here, this automatic routine save us time and efforts. Well, rather than rely on memory, our brain forms habit through a loop involving a cure routine and reward. Let's consider the habit of constantly checking our phones as an example. A cue might be the ping of a new alert. The routine is in checking our phones is an award or reward that slides the inputs hit when we get when we see a message or email. Like example for me, when I ever receive a message, I jump out of the bed and I hold my phone, start checking, and I then sit for hours and hours and hours on my phone without even thinking about it. The time have been passing and I don't know what I'm doing. Like it's just a routine. Soon this become a habit, and we often admire and check our phones without even realizing it. This is just an example. So this is how our we like maintain the habits in our day. We maintain the happiness, the habits, everything we do. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you get to know me more, to watch my videos, and you know, please subscribe. Have a nice day.